is to do something on speech uh, audio transcription and speech analysis i don't know if it still works it should be using javascript it is transcribing sorry for that well not sorry i should keep apologizing for the ads but uh, yeah that's how we pay electricity yeah so this transcription still works okay we were thinking doing uh, more vivid uh, specifically well currently it's only doing uh, volume metrics and speech rate we could have been if there is interest we could be also doing other things like uh, other metrics other parameters of your speech frequencies and the like uh, spectrograms would be nice uh, but also in the future training a uh, model uh, ideally that will um, well i can only train it for myself you can potentially train it for your own voice that will actually recognize better the words that I say. So I haven't been monitoring, but this might be making a lot of mistakes, which, yeah, for example, I didn't say Monday. So it's normally working okay. This one should be all JavaScript as well. I can check. We host everything locally. If it's JavaScript, just load it on your browser. So I have less control over what it actually does and how well it's working apparently this one yeah there is a disclaimer at the, mo at the bottom that's only working on uh, chromium based um, browsers so i don't think it uh, will work on uh, firefox or whatever whatever you use uh, on uh, apple devices i mean probably just should throw them in the bin but uh, <laughs> uh, but it's a whole different story. Yeah, there's a bunch of things currently on uh, the list of uh, Bionic Kills. The ones uh, on the website. Let's open it in another. See if the transcriber still works. Uh, in another tab. Uh, what else we got? Yeah, it's mainly around the time series data. Uh, like EEG. A brain waves and cellophography. Will it get me saying that? Uh, no, because I'm probably mispronouncing it. I won't try it again. A ECG game that we're currently turning into, also creating a robot that will play this game um, using fuzzy logic. Later, potentially neural networks as well. And what else we got? Uh, yeah, synthetic EG signal generator. Yeah, that one. We had a better version in uh, LabVIEW in the past. Yeah, this one is more basic. Yeah, you can select your... This, this is not updating. It's pretty annoying. Yeah, 10 is the default. So it should uh, tell you what the current value is. It's not doing that. And then you can uh, load whichever delta, theta, alpha, beta, gamma. Yeah, we open another tab. Yeah, we'll push my server, see how well it can handle uh, multiple tabs. There's this inverse F noise that's actually mimicking a baseline EEG pretty well. And this tool, yeah, this one's using uh, using uh, Plotly.js. Um, I think you can just generate the stuff by refreshing the page so why i keep getting this monopoly ads oh come on go away yeah it's always uh, tempting to use a uh, ad ad blocker isn't it but please don't because uh, that's uh, how most uh, creators make uh, ends uh, meet but don't use ad blockers but yes it's very tempting so i was just saying inverse f yeah this tool a ideal will have more uh, options there but um, the inverse f uh, noise function um, mimicking why is it not updating ah, it just takes some time a uh, mimicking baseline eeg quite well so the standard noise will be gaussian white okay, there must be too many data points in there you have the frequency response of it as well it's a power over frequency a periodic is fine too 
but uh, yeah, inverse f is um, more closely resembles uh, baseline EG. Anyway, what else we've got? Got the G signal generator. So this one's quite uh, a quite extensive. It's using NeuroKit two, a Python library, a Flask and NumPy. So this is a Flask application, so it will have some sort of back end to it as well. You can uh, change your a uh, you know blood uh, a pressure. Yet yeah, those numbers should update there, shouldn't they? That's a bit odd. It's really loaded quickly. Yeah, this one is pretty nice and uh, quick. So you can select your window size. Uh, isoelectric voltage. Yeah, we'll add this uh, DC component to the signal. Uh, those delays for some reason grayed out. So I don't know why those are grayed out the milliseconds for the QRST and PQRS. This is actually interesting because this is something we're looking at uh, currently for the bot that plays uh, the Cardio Quest game. The labeling of, uh, yeah, we're doing uh, more changes to it yesterday. This is what we currently have. So yeah, in, the, in this case, um, the game is meant for you, for a human, assuming you're a human. Let me know if you're a human watching this. So the game meant to be targeted at anyone who's interested in the ECG to learn about the labeling data, normal, abnormal. Yeah, we spent quite a lot of time on this one, hopefully. So we have the game available for you to play to try out um, it's called ECG game uh, but that uh, doesn't have the bot playing it so you're just competing against yourself so yeah so this this game uh, so this is your score assuming you are human and then there is the score for the machine uh, so you can compete against the machine and yeah, the machine currently is not doing very well when the, the noise level is increased. When it's zero, it's doing perfectly well. Well, at least last time it was. So those are all uh, abnormal, C abnormal ECGs. It's looking at uh, the number of positive negative peaks, uh, amplitude, the R peak sharpness. So it's taking that value and going halfway through the peak and uh, measuring the distance on the left and right. Then it's also looking at PR and the RT intervals, so essentially the interval before and after the R peak, and gives you an abnormality score. So, in, for example, for the signal it was 0.8, for this one is 0.5, just round it up. And for the, oops, I clicked on it by mistake. Uh, this was a normal ECG, a normal ECG again, and the abnormality score is 0.1, and that's the one. The human, when you play this game, you should not, do not click on that waveform because you will get minus 10 points if you do. That was an example. But the machine, when there is no noise, does uh, extremely well and it's uh, able to distinguish uh, between this normal, it says decision normal because the abnormality score is very low or abnormal when the abnormality score is high so that's what it does label ecg waveforms and uh, you know benchmark yourself against the robot playing the same game and the robot is not cheating it doesn't have the labels um, the waveforms being generated in javascript so front end and the fuzzy logic the robot is operating on the server a python code in the back end so it doesn't have the labels it's just looking at the waveform exactly the same way as you do well i mean it doesn't have eyes it just gets the the data points and there's no filtering involved as well so so it's not uh, doing anything uh, fancy literally just looking at those uh, uh, parameters let's see what else we've got Got something, we already covered that. 
ECG feature extraction. Yeah, that's working pretty well, but there's not much uh, uh, you can do with this tool. That segment range is essentially the window where we look for the for the peaks. Because if you uh, change the segment range, it stuffs up the detection. Getting an error for one of the waveforms and that's probably means it doesn't mean that it doesn't meet any of the fuzzy rules because the output cannot be calculated likely because the system is too sparse check to make sure this set of input values will activate at least one connected term in each uh, antecedent via the current set of rules yes we need to make uh, sure all the rules are covered yeah this will be coming from analyzed waveform uh, um, so if you haven't checked uh, bionicchaos.com please do so this is what we are running these streams for there's a bunch of tools some of them are pretty old they will need some um, it's all prototypes so it's all under development uh, some tools are more developed than uh, others.